assalamu alaikum students uh, today we will learn about microbodies and paroxysm in this lecture uh, we will discuss about the uh, introduction to microbodies uh, structure and types of microbodies uh, role of uh, paroxysm in cellular metabolism function of paroxysm and at the end we will discuss about differentiation between paroxysm and glyoxysm So what are microbodies? The microbodies are composed of single membrane that surround the finely granular matrix. These organelles are home to diverse enzymatic reactions, including several metabolic reactions that provide energy. They can be distinguished uh, from other organelles by their richness in enzyme catalase. Okay. Their average diameter ranges from 0.1 to 1.5 micromoles. They are often round in thin sections. They can also appear as a dumbbell shape. Mostly uh, they are uh, present in the cytoplasm of almost all eukaryotic cells. These are also called peroxisomes. Because they are the site of synthesis and degradation, mean breakdown of hydrogen peroxide, a highly reactive and toxic oxidizing agent. Peroxisomes are simple membrane bound vesicle with a diameter of 0.1 to 1 a micromole that may contain a dense crystalline core of oxidative enzyme. As you can see in the picture, microbodies were first seen in electron microscope by Rudin in 1954, who proposed the term microbody. Ruler and Bernhard in 1956 presented the first widely available picture of microbodies in the liver cell. Nearly a decade later, Christian D. Devo and his co worker isolated microbodies from the rat liver cells as a contaminant of mitochondrial fraction. Didevo and his co-worker did not like the term microbody as it was so journal and strictly morphological. They need to understand the function fully. So, after learning more about the function of microbody, they named them peroxisome. So, uh, peroxisomes are a multifunctional organelle containing more than 50 enzymes involved in such a diverse activities. Uh, for example, the oxidation of very long chain fatty acid. Mm, so, what is uh, uh, long chain fatty acid? Once whose chain typically contains 24 to 26 carbons and the synthesis of plasmologin which are an unusual class of phospholipid in which one of the fatty acid is linked to cholesterol by an ether linkage rather than an ester linkage uh, so uh, plasmologins are found in numerous human tissues uh, with particularly enrichment in nerve, nervous, immune, and uh, cardiovascular system. They may actually form paroxysmal reticulum. Microbodies have a limiting membrane of a nearly 6.5 nanometer thick and surround a matrix that can appear amorphous, granular, or paracrystalline. There are at least 32 known peroxisomal proteins called peroxin. These are special dogging proteins for obtaining material from cytosol and endoplasmic reticulum. So let's uh, discuss its structure. The microbodies are found in the cytoplasm of a cell but they are only visible with the help of electron microscope. 
they are surrounded by a single phospholipid bilayer membrane and they contain a matrix of intracellular material including enzymes and other proteins but they do not uh, seem to contain any genetic material like mitochondria uh, to allow them to self replicate because they don't have uh, any dna this picture depicts the structure of peroxisome peroxisomes have the thickest membrane of all organelles it has a dense matrix that contain enzymes if you look at the picture it has a crystalloid core in the center which is present in some species for example liver cell of rat it is absent in human liver cell it contain urate oxidase enzyme which oxidizes a uric acid there are three types of microbody peroxisome gyroxisomes and Cephalosomes. Uh, remember, students, uh, peroxisomes are present both in animal and uh, plant cells, while glycosomes and cephalosomes only present in plant cells. The peroxisomes are found in almost all eukaryotic cells. In animal cells, peroxisomes perform fat metabolism, a peroxide metabolism. In plant cells, uh, photorespiration occurs in peroxisomes with mitochondria and chloroplasts and contain enzymes that oxidize a molecule like fatty acids and amino acids. Glyoxisomes are found in germination oil seed, uh, castor seed, groundnut seed, etc. These are involved in converting fat into carbohydrate by the process known as glyconogenesis. In glyoxisomes, the fatty acids are oxidized to acetyl-CoA by peroxisomal beta-oxidation enzymes. This picture depicts a glyoxisome localization within the plant seedling. You can see the small dark structure which are called glyoxisomes. The third type is ferrosome. And these are single membrane small spherical cells organelles that are specialized to synthesize and store lipids. For example, cell of cotyledon of mustard and groundnut. And these are mostly found in fat storing plant cells but are abundant in oil seeds. For example, maize root tip. They are also known as uh, plant lysosome because it contain acid hydrolase. But they differ from lysosomes in the absence of some characteristic enzymes, for example, lipase. Uh, remember, students, the, their main function is the synthesis and storage of lipids. Their diameter is about uh, 0.5 to 2.5 micron. The main function of peroxisome is the lipid metabolism and the processing of reactive oxygen species. Other uh, peroxisome functions include uh, they take part in various oxidative processes, they take part in lipid metabolism and catabolism of amino acids, polyamines and bile acids. The reactive oxygen species uh, such as peroxidase is produced in the process is converted to water by various enzymes like peroxidase and catalase. In plants, peroxisomes facilitate a photosynthesis and seed germination. Uh, so, we can say that uh, these organelles were named peroxisome because they are the site of synthesis and breakdown of hydrogen peroxide, a highly reactive and toxic oxidizing agent. Hydrogen peroxide is produced by a number of peroxisomal enzymes including urate oxidase, oxidase glycolate oxidase and amino acid oxidases that utilize molecular oxygen to oxidize their respective septary. Uh, peroxisome contain at least 30 to 50 different enzymes 
which are involved in a variety of biochemical pathway in different types of cell. Uh, peroxisomes originally were defined as organelles that carry out oxidation reaction leading to the production of hydrogen peroxide. Because hydrogen peroxide is harmful as you know to the cell, peroxisomes also contain enzyme catalase which decomposes hydrogen peroxide either by converting it into water or by using it to oxidize another organic compound. Peroxisome uh, play two particularly important roles in plants. First, peroxisome in seed are responsible for the conversion of store fatty acid to carbohydrates, which is uh, uh, critical to providing energy and raw material for the growth of the germinating plants. This occur via series of reactions term the glycosylate cycle. The peroxisome in which uh, this uh, take place are sometimes called a glycosome. Secondly, peroxisome in leaves are involved in photorespiration which serve to metabolize a side product formed during photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is converted to carbohydrate by a series of reactions called Calvin cycle. The first step is the addition of carbon dioxide to the 5-carbon sugar, ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate, uh, which yields two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. 3 carbon each. However, the enzyme involved, uh, for example, Rubesco, sometimes catalyzes the addition of oxygen instead of carbon dioxide, producing one molecule of 3 phosphoglycerate and one molecule of phosphoglycolate, 2 carbon. Okay, This is a side reaction, and the phosphoglycolate is not a useful metabolite. As you all know that oxygen is more prevalent than carbon dioxide. Phosphoglycolate is first converted to glycolate and then transferred to peroxisome where it is oxidized and converted to glycine. Glycine is then transferred to mitochondria where two molecules of glycine are converted to one molecule of serine with the loss of carbon dioxide and ammonia. The serine is then returned to peroxisome where it is converted to glycerate. Finally, the glycerate is transferred back to chloroplast where it re enters the Calvin cycle. Photorespiration does not appear to be beneficial for plant uh, since it is essentially the reverse of photosynthesis where oxygen is consumed and carbon dioxide is released without any gain of ATP. Peroxisome does play an important role by allowing most of the carbon in glycolate to be recovered and utilized. Some of the functions of peroxisome in human liver is uh, the breakdown of excess of fatty acid by oxidation, a breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, it also participates in the synthesis of cholesterol, it uh, participates in the synthesis of bile acid and also helps in the synthesis of lipids, breakdown of uh, excess of purine uh, to zoic acid. Peroxisomes are important for normal brain and normal function. Absence of peroxisome can lead to abnormality, especially a brain uh, disorder. Uh, peroxisomal disorders are caused by mutations in genes that are involved in peroxisome biogenesis or that encode the enzymes and transporter proteins. Peroxisomal disorders are congenital disorders mean by birth defect and they range from relatively moderate to severe in nature. 
the Zilberger spectrum, for example, includes Zilberger syndrome, unental, uh, NALD, and infantile uh, baptism and diseases. A uh, paroxysmal disorder on the Zilberger uh, spectrum means that the paroxysm in your cells aren't working uh, properly or uh, they are absent or are severely decreased. Mutation giving rise to Zilberger syndrome cause copper iron and substance called very long chain fatty acid to accumulate in the blood and in tissue uh, such as liver, brain and kidneys. Infants with Zilberger syndrome are often born with uh, facial deformity and intellectual disability. Some may have uh, impaired vision and hearing and may experience with severe uh, gastrointestinal bleeding or liver failure. So uh, let's uh, discuss about the comparison between paroxysome and gly glyoxysome. These organelles uh, differ in their distribution and enzyme composition, although uh, both have the capacity to transform non-carbohydrate material into carbohydrate. Peroxisomes are found in both animal cells and in leaves of higher plants, whereas uh, glyoxisomes are located only in plants and particularly in germinating seeds. Peroxisomes act in parallel with chloroplasts in higher plants and are believed to undertake photodispiration, whereas the glyoxisomes are involved in the formation of sugars by the breakdown of fatty acid in germinating seeds. Peroxisomes also occur in green cells and contain oxidases, especially glycolate oxidase, which catalyze the reaction important in photorespiration. Uh, for example, glycolate plus oxygen uh, give rise uh, glyco um, oxalate plus hydrogen peroxide catalase, which rapidly destroy the potentially dangerous hydrogen peroxide, thus form thereby neutralizing the toxicity. In that way, peroxisomes provide a safe location for the oxidation metabolism of certain molecules. Paroxysomes have uh, some special similarities with other cell organelles. Initially, it was difficult to even distinguish lysosomes from the paroxysome through microscopic examination alone. Thereafter, differential uh, centrifugation revealed that these two subcellular uh, structures had different um, compositions. And their protein and lipid component and uh, distinct and they contain very different enzymes. Peroxisome contrast in their uh, features with mitochondria and chloroplast. Unlike mitochondria and chloroplast, peroxisome contain no genetic material or translation machinery. Therefore, their entire proteome comes through import from the cytoplasm. In addition, a single membrane forms peroxisomes in contrast to the double membranous structure of mitochondria and chloroplasts. This is all about uh, microbodies and their peroxisome. Hope you understood the lecture. If you have any question, we will discuss it in our question answer session. Thank you.